This is just a reminder to subscribe. And if you're looking to get more out of podcasting, I just did a Spotify masterclass, which you can find the link for in the description. So be sure to check that out as well. Thanks, guys. Ah. You're back. I'm thirsty. But you're back. That's not that's not good <clears throat> to, to drink that much water that fast. <clears throat> you, you My just, lungs. You just <clears throat> gave the people some nice ASMR. <coughs> Did it go down the wrong pipe? Went into my lungs. Yeah, because you were drinking so fast. No, but I... I <clears throat> this is a, a service... What's that? Service announcement for all people. PSA. Don't drink water as fast as Justin. You will choke. But you're back. Yeah. I'm so excited for this theme today. Do you have any idea what it is? No. no. Trees. Tree... No. <laughs> I have been very obsessed with trees lately. Um, I think that was on a Patreon. So people that aren't on Patreon are probably like trees. She's obsessed with trees. Yeah, I love trees. Every time we're driving or walking around neighborhoods, I'm always admiring like people's trees and how nice they are. I'm trying to, you know, scope out what trees I want to plant and things like that. I love a good tree. Yeah. But um. I was asking people on Patreon, I was like, I'm recording an episode for this week, tonight. What should the theme be? Like, what stories? Did you say with who? Yeah, I said with Justin. Oh. And Izzy. Izzy said, you guys should do a renovation theme since y'all are moving along with your house. Like, this situation needs some improvement or renovation or stories that have to do with actual home renovation. So this theme is Brought to you thanks to Izzy. You found enough? On Patreon. Oh, I just pumped them out. I just researched the past two hours, diving into stories here and there and making some fit that people are going to be like, that doesn't fit. It fits. Oh, like it does right at the end. No, it fits. It's like the la <laughs> The whole problem is about the relationship and the last thing is like, and we're going into renovation soon. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it ties in. It basically does. Or just like these relationships are so unhealthy. These people need to renovate. They need different living situations. They need changes in their life. Just like, you know. I see what you did there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because there's no way you would have found that many renovation I, stories. Okay, I actually found way more renovation stories than One, I needed. No, two. at least 15. But then I was like. But they're not exciting. Not They're like, all of should them. we pick this wood or should we pick this wood? Okay, you're going to see some of the renovation ones I did pick are really exciting. And did they find bodies? No, no bodies found in walls. Maybe I'll try to find one of those for the spooky season episodes. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be good. But um, if you're watching on YouTube, you will see a video of our house. It is taken down to the studs, you guys. It is the craziest thing ever to see. Not any studs redwood studs because our house is old it was built in the 20s 30s early 30s late 20s i thought it was 39 20. really okay yep. it was clearly the 30s um <laughs> but it's old and has redwood studs and so we're taking some of those studs and gonna give it to like a table maker and have like a redwood table and it's just it's been a really cool process so far picking out everything and there will be lots of home renovation and home content coming your way. Maybe main channel, maybe THT Unsupervised. Be sure you're subscribed to both so you don't miss out on anything. But, and a uh, chicken coop. Oh, and we're getting chickens. Yeah, we got to build a coop. Can we go get them? Yeah, you pick them out at a little feed store. January? Sometime around then, yeah. Are we building the coop? They have pre-made ones on Home Depot. And Lowe's. Wait, like self-assembly? If you really want to build it yourself, we could, yeah. We could DIY a chicken coop. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be Go cute. Go out every morning and say hi to my girls. <laughs> I built that house. <laughs> oh, okay, well, let's... I, oh my God, not the water again. Come on, get it together, thirsty boy. Hey, dehydrated. <sighs> yeah, same. But are you ready? Yep. Okay, let's dive in.
Do we want to start with actual home reno drama or... Yeah. Okay. Quick. Very quick. I'm decisive today. It's weird for me. Yeah. So this one was posted four days ago. It is titled, Am I the asshole for not letting my husband take our toddler to a remote island cabin? My husband, 41 male, wants to take our toddler son, two and a half male, to his remote Canadian cottage without me. This cottage is in another country. It's in Canada. We are from the U.S. So on top of it being a four and a half hour flight away, it requires a three hour drive, then a 30 plus minute ferry ride as the cottage is located on an island that is only accessible by boat. Last time we stayed at the cottage, there was no hot shower water for the entire five days. Before that, I was exposed to bats in the sleeping room and had to drive to New York to get vaccinated for rabies. She got bit. I think even if you're like exposed, they're oh, very- Oh, really? They're very cautious oh, of rabies. I was going to say, if I got bit by something, I would say it. Not just say I was exposed. Yeah. Before that trip, we lost power and had no hot water, and I had food poisoning. The water is unfiltered from the lake. It's always something going wrong, and I'm just so, so sick of it. I told him I'd stay for two to three nights next year, but I don't want to stay five nights again. It's also very difficult with a toddler who never sleeps through the night. This cottage means a lot to my husband. He has fond memories of being there with his family and friends when growing up but it has always been a source of intense anxiety and discomfort for me. From the bugs to the bats to the lack of basic amenities, we often lose power or hot water. I just always get stressed and dread being there. Every single year, I dread it. My husband knows this and has been working on fixing up the cottage, but it's just very uncomfortable for me and he knows this. I have put up with it for years, but I'm tired and want to limit how long I will stay there in the future. Now he is threatening to take our two and a half year old son there for a week plus without me, which I find unacceptable. I have never threatened to take our son anywhere without his consent, much less to another country. Our son is afraid of flies, screams and cries whenever they get near, and doesn't sleep through the night. I don't think he will enjoy this trip that he's too young to consent to, especially with his mom gone. Am I the asshole for telling my husband I won't allow him to take my son to a different country without my consent? Mm. I know this is the worst answer, but I feel like we don't have enough context. Really? Yeah. I, I really don't know the dynamic, but my gut feeling is that she's almost overprotective and this would be really good for the kid. Honestly, I feel like this house. I feel like she's cottage, dramatizing everything. I feel like it's being like, oh really? my god, it's it's hell on earth. I feel like if you have bats end up in the cabin that you're sleeping in, it's a pretty uninhabitable place. So, but my my thing with it, okay, let's address the kid thing first. He's two and a half. He's a little baby. I mean, this kid. Like, needs, what's Emmett? Emmett's four. And even four, I mean, that kid, you need all eyes on him at all times. Two and a half is a very vulnerable age. Yeah. Yeah, it is young. I mean, like, hopefully in a few years, he cannot be afraid of flies because that's a long, long... Long life. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, sure. Okay, fine. Then, yeah, maybe it's good in a f like a few years. But it was just... All the comments are very weird, like threatening to take him. And yeah. this seems like a, a, a him, her problem. And the kid is just kind of collateral. Yeah. But it's really just shots being fired back and forth. Like you're going to take him there without his mom. Mm. And then like the, how could you take him to such a terrible place? And then the husband could be like, well, I'm going to take him there for weeks okay. if you're not going to let us go. It just feels like, shots being fired well, back and forth. And it does seem more of a like a control thing. I'll go with you there. I do I guess I would say like there could be a little bit more context. Like if this dad is now Dorsey type and is very capable of camping and doing all these things, then I guess it wouldn't be a big deal because you would never question a mom taking her child somewhere by themselves. But you know what I mean? 
Like if a mom wanted to like, hey, I'm going on a trip, like think about all the single moms out there or single parents that like go out, travel, do everything on their own, crush it. Like, I guess like, yes, the kid is little, but this dad could be perfectly capable of going camping. I'm saying camping because it's kind of a shack yeah. with his kid. Well, I'm literally picturing Matt doing this. Yes. And that kid would be perfectly That's- fine and nothing would happen. And if it was sketchy, I'm sure they'd figure something else out. Like, yeah. you're not going to put your kid in danger. So that's why it's feeling like a him, her problem. Not so much of a, like, you're going to put our kid in total danger and you're doing this without my consent. And like, and it's the language. Yeah. Like she could have said, he's going to take our kid here without my consent. Not like he's threatening like, where's all this threatening coming from? It is interesting. It's the choice language just shows that there's a lot of conflict between them. Threatening? Well, yeah. And like, is it threatening or is he just saying, I'm going to take the baby? Context. Which, but again, like when it comes to a two and a half year old, like you guys do need to agree on what's happening with this child, especially if this kid is leaving the country. Like for this kid to even leave the country, I'm pretty sure you need both parents' permission Otherwise, it literally could be considered kidnapping. And the only reason I think this, and I haven't researched or anything, but when my little brother went on a cruise with my dad, he had to have like my mom's written permission to take him. Mm. And so- Yeah, I don't know anything about that. Yeah. It is a long journey. Very. And I guess it's, you're too young to really take in that experience versus when you maybe get to six or seven, you actually start to remember- big like a big yeah. trip you did with your dad and maybe in the meantime they could renovate and you know be hopeful about that this could be a place i just don't like the negativity coming from her side like yeah i'm just going to extremely limit you know the amount of time i go for in the future where she's almost ready to write this place off and be done with it even though it's so special to him i mean that'd be like me coming to the farm and not liking being there and writing a post on Reddit and being like, yeah, I think I'm just going to tell Morgan I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to limit my time coming up to the farm. And I'm not like, I'm not going to give it a chance anymore because I had one bad experience. Yeah. Versus, oh, maybe with some renovations, this place could end up really great and an awesome place to bring our kid and go in the future. Like yeah. we just got to put some money into it if that's a possibility. But it's all just written off. Like she's starting to, filter down like okay the amount of time i'm gonna go there keeps going down and down and down until i don't go again yeah well and if it's not your cup of tea just don't go like this is a great solution he still wants to go he's happy to take the kid by himself when he could go with family like they always used to exactly and so i guess it is like kind of controlling and maybe like she is just not the outdoorsy person like i don't know where she's from i don't know what her background is but and envision like a prissy person who doesn't like getting dirty, doesn't like mud, you know, likes two showers a day. Like, you know what I mean? Just yeah. isn't outdoorsy or adventurous in those in those ways. And maybe this just isn't for her, but it shouldn't stop him from getting to have those experiences with his kids. And you have kind of got me thinking like, look at all those parents that will go camping with like one year olds or two year olds. And they'll literally go hike Yosemite with a kid in a backpack and they're out there zooming. Kids, as long as like they're clothed, fed, protected from the environment, like your kid is going to be fine. Well, and it's honestly, I don't know what age or any of this. I don't have a kid, but it's good to start having those experiences young. Yeah. I remember fun. some of the most outdoorsy traveling, like outdoor sleeping type stuff was when I was really young. And it was yeah. awesome. That's I was eating fish. When you have the time. I was catching fish. You I was were, eating fish. You ate a fish. Oh, I ate a ton. Yeah. When I was a little kid, what? I was eating hamburgers, beef, everything. Why don't we get back to the burgers? I was camping. Just a couple cows I was doing there. everything. And so, but for the record, no, I do not think he should just be like, nope, this is how it's going and I'm taking the kid and I'm going. Obviously not. There's got to be some kind of a, you know, come to an agreeance on this situation where it's, I think he's feeling the offense of she's trying to be done with this place. 
And the kid is just in the middle of all this because he loves this place. Yeah. Yes, you shouldn't just take the kid. But it's more of like a battle between her and him about this place. And the him kid is wanting collateral. to bring the kid is like putting it in the spotlight. Yeah. Well, there is a comment from someone. They go, info. Do you have actual safety concerns about your husband being able to take care of the kid on his own for a week? Because to me, this seems like a fairly simple solution. You despise going to this cabin and you don't want to have to go anymore. Your husband loves it and he wants to go and share it with your kid. He's proposing a scenario where you get what you want, being nowhere near the cabin, and he gets what he wants, being at the cabin. Why isn't this acceptable to you? Quote, my toddler might not enjoy a new experience isn't a good enough reason to refuse. And this, that's a very valid point. I always feel like the top comments take what I tried to blab on for for 10 minutes and Concise. just puts it in a paragraph. Amazing. Because <laughs> they had time to think through it. Well, so OP responds to that and goes, yes, I do have safety concerns. This cottage is on an island with no hospital or medical facilities. If something happened, and just last week my mother-in-law was exposed to bats there and is now getting a series of rabies vaccines, I'm not confident in my husband's judgment to respond appropriately. There have been multiple times I've taken my son to the doctor for what turned out to be legitimate issues, which my husband had brushed aside. I have no problem with my husband going. I have a problem with forcing my son to go without his consent, which he is too young to give. Which that comment I find See, it's so weird. weird. Yes. Well, I just think that's weird because like babies and like young kids can't really consent to anything. Like, so are you supposed to just keep them at home do in a bubble? Do you want to go on a trip to Minnesota or do you want to stay in California? Do you want to go to school? No, I don't want to go to school. Okay, well, you have to go to school. Like, I think kids should have autonomy over their own bodies and be able to consent to certain things. But at the same time, like, I don't know, that that word seems to be kind of getting thrown around here by her. And it's like, yeah, your kid's going to have a great experience. But yeah, okay, calling into question dad's capabilities. Yeah, that's a problem. That's the context though, right? Yeah. That should be in the initial write-in. Otherwise, it makes you sound have. really weird, like you're you're freaking out and there's not a lot to back it up. With actual safety concerns, yes. And then if he still puts up a fight, like, no, I'm taking him, then this becomes a much larger, weirder deal. Yeah. But it's more like, you know, it. the, the first comment did make a lot of sense. Now the follow-up, with the extra info, ads like, yeah, maybe don't take the kid. Not yet, right? Because if you were him, wouldn't you want to fix this place up eventually? Yeah. And be able to not have bats? For and sure. And be able to bring your kid who's not What's two? up with the bats? Like, we know. see bats. I see bats all the time. Like, if you kind of get close- They're everywhere. Like close to dusk, like you'll see them swooping and they're out here. eating bugs. They're everywhere. But even back home, they're, they're at my mom's down in the cities. They're up north at the land. They're, they're up, everywhere. They're at the farm. And they're- I'm sure they're in upstate they're New York. They're everywhere. Where yeah, yeah, yeah. This person talks about driving a buffalo. Like They just do their thing. They just do their thing. But yeah, like if they swoop at your head or get close to you, like, yeah, you should get your rabies shot. Oh God, I haven't. I They swoop it at my head though. Have they? Oh, yeah. Like right at your Most, head? A lot at the, the Plymouth house I grew up in. Yeah. All the time. Just... <laughs> well, Because so, I used to live in the umbrella. Yeah. So some days we'd roll up the outdoor umbrella and then... Oh, and you, then, you definitely should have got some. Because I was... I Googled it just now and I'm like, why are these people like so stressed about the bats and rabies? But I Googled when to get rabies after bat exposure should you get rabies shot after bat exposure? Rabies can spread to people from bats after minor, seemingly unimportant or unrecognized bites or scratches. They got to touch you, dude. They got to touch you, dude. Yeah, it ain't COVID they, going through the air. But if they swoop at you and you get a little nick that you don't even realize is a nick, like today I walked across the street to go get my coffee and I was wearing my Crocs and I, you know, went across- Where? And, 
right by the house. And I went across an intersection that apparently had a car accident recently. And as I'm flip flopping in my Crocs, a piece of glass gets kicked into my Croc. I I thought it was just like a pebble. I didn't know what it was. And so I like took my shoe off and shook it out. It was good. And all of a sudden I'm like, I keep walking and I'm, you know, I get to Starbucks and I sit down and I look inside my Croc. It is covered. Oh, so you didn't really feel it? No, it was covered in blood. Like I was bleeding. I think feet do that. It was the craziest thing. And I'm like, small, right? Yeah. Well, and then I'm here thinking, I'm like, this is glass from the street. I don't know if it's from a car or a crack pipe. And then I'm like, Jesus, do I need to go get a tetanus shot? Do I need like a hepatitis vaccine now? So I don't know what to do. It, it's a tiny little nick. I talked it to Amy. It was probably sterile. I don't know. I went and soaked my foot in alcohol. But How I think that feel? It was fine. Oh, because it, I so think it was small, it was small, but it bled everywhere. But you just like, you know, mm-hmm. those little in, in an innocuous, those innocuous little things that happen. You're like, if there wouldn't have been blood, I never would have known I got cut by glass. Well, I don't know the last time I had tetanus shots. And then we were moving all those metal things at the farm. Everyone, and, I'm like, and I'm like, um, I don't know. How do you get, look up these records? Are they just out there? You should have like... Um, I don't have a doctor anymore. You should have an immunization record, though. A lot of it gets registered Where? in a database. Can I, how Could like someone access that? I can't. You could contact your medical provider. You're getting one with ZocDoc. You'll be fine. Ugh, so stressful. But everyone should get their boosters up to date. Rabies. At least check. Tetanus. Like check. HPV. Just do it. It's worth it, especially when you have things like this happen and you're like, oh my God, am I going to get rabies? And yeah. have you seen people die from rabies? Like once you get that, you're you're not doing good. You're dead. <sighs> yeah, rabies is crazy. We watched a Kurzgesagt video on it. Yeah. I'm not, I know I'm not saying that right, but it's my favorite YouTube channel that just puts me to bed. Kurzgesagt or whatever. How do you say it? Something like that. That was pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But yeah, I think... They definitely need to get on the same page, but yeah. I, there is some interesting language, threatening, consent, um, but I understand the safety concerns if like this dad isn't capable. Yeah, don't bring the kid. Don't bring the kid yeah. right now. Don't do it yet, but get, like, you guys need to talk. Well, and isn't it, I think like it is interesting too, like my husband has brushed a lot of things off that have turned out to be something That's a big concern that you should be addressing at home too. Yeah. Like that's a problem. If you can't trust your husband to take care of your baby, you don't have a partner. You're a single parent. So you should probably address that. You need some home renovations too, not just cabin. Oh. Yeah, you get that? That's pretty Uh, good. Pretty good. I didn't even catch that they had home needs there. Yep. Yep. Mm. Okay. Moving on. Right through me. Moving along through you (laughs) in one ear out the other is kind of through me oh yeah if you're going that way yeah not the other way yeah well you know normally when you say through me it's in and down Mm -hmm. yeah okay moving along okay another home reno before we mix it up with some drama yep This one is 11 days old. It's coming from Mommy Baking Cupcakes titled, Am I the asshole for not wanting to get a mortgage on my house to pay for unnecessary renovations? I've been married to my husband for five years. The house where we live in was a gift from my parents to me before I even met my husband. When my husband and I met, he owned a condo. Later on, when we decided to move in together, he sold his condo and paid his debts. There was nothing left from that transaction. We got married five years ago. He signed a prenuptial agreement, accepting he has no claim on the house and recognizing it as a gift to me from my parents. I also signed accepting to not claim any of his properties if he gets one. The house is not old and we are happy in it, but he has been pushing me to renovate the house. His salary is more than double mine, so he wants us to get a mortgage on the house to pay for the renovation. By doing this, the notary will have to legally add his name on the deed of the house, 
but I'm not sure how I feel about this. He has been putting a lot of pressure for us to proceed with this. When we bought the house, my parents and I, it cost 440 k Now it's valued to almost $1 million. If he gets his name on the deed, he automatically gets 500 k And I'm scared that if we ever divorce, he will get half. We don't have children together. I do have one daughter. He says, I've been the asshole for not wanting him to also own the house. And at the same time, I have pressure from my family to not do this, as this is the future for my daughter. I see myself trapped in between, but I also think it's better to keep the house to myself. Am I the asshole? No. No. I think the whole deal here is you don't want to do it. And you hold all the cards. It's weird how sometimes people get so bent out of shape and they get so focused on one thing and it has to happen. They want it no matter what and they don't even care what their partner thinks. And it's just, they're so locked into, nope, this needs to happen. We have to do this. And there's no way to like get through to them. Like, that's not what I'd want in a partner. I don't want that. I don't want someone who just bulldozes their way so far forward that it's like, you can't pull them back and they'll never listen to your side. That's just communication breakdown 101. Right there, blinking. So no, I obviously you're not the asshole. Um, you own the house. You don't want to renovate the house. End so of story. it's like it's like a non-starter, basically for her. So we need to sit down and have that conversation and say, no, I don't want to do this. And if it's such a big deal. I mean, there's like no way to find a middle ground either. It's either yes or it's no. And in your case, it's no. There's no compromise except for him. He would have to compromise and say, okay, yeah, we've been living here. It's fine. Like, you know, maybe we'll yeah. move on to a, another place one day and then we can make it more our own or whatever it is. But I'm just getting like very bad vibes from this though. It's just weird. It's a weird thing to pick such a giant fight over, but people have broken up over way less. Well, to me, it seems very conniving and purposeful. Like there's a reason why he wants to do this. And I think it's one thing if like you want to do a renovation to like better a room you really use and like your partner might see it as unnecessary, but it's, you know, honey, it's fine. I'll pay for it. This is something I really want. I'll pay for it. Sure. And OP says here that he makes more than double what OP makes. So he should have no problem paying for a, a renovation if he so chooses to do so. But, but he if wants, she wants to do it as well. Yeah, because it's her even house. Even if he's paying for it. But he's not paying for it. That's where I'm like, if you want to do a renovation so bad, maybe offer to pay for it. And then maybe you could get that back down the road from your partner since it is their house. But he's not offering to pay. He wants a mortgage taken out to use that refinancing the home to pay for the renovations. But the funny, weird thing is like, and I get OP might not have given him the opportunity, but instead of like he sold his condo and investing that money into their house to maybe become more even with OP, he paid off all his debts and so has a house free. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, he's getting like a great scenario. Mm -hmm. And it's like OP even signed on the prenup, any properties you buy even after we're married, not mine, they're all yours. Mm -hmm. Which like, that's a very fair deal. So I don't know. I'm just getting weird vibes. Like this almost feels kind of like a, oh, honey, let's up your life insurance policy. And then oops, off a cliff. Like it just feels very dark and manipulative. And I don't like could, it could go there. Well, and even OP, like I, I think this comment down here is like, if he gets his name on the deed, he automatically gets 500 K, which, hey, 
Like if you're conniving and looking at this as an investment, well, like, oh honey, let's refinance and take out a mortgage for 200K of renos and he automatically gets an extra 250K of equity or whatever the math is. Like yeah, my I mean, brain- it's not like a slot machine that spits out 500K. But it could be if he wants a divorce. Well, that's a legal question though, right? Based on the prenup, what happens when someone gets added? I think technically, if she added him, I feel like that- It breaks the prenup? It might supersede it in certain states, like especially if it's a state that really values community property like California. Yeah. I don't know the legality of it. I don't know. Because it also could be the other way where the prenup doesn't get overwritten. And True. His name's just on it, but all the equity's hers. It would be really you interesting. Know, I'm just like, question I don't know. To that's a, a that's a legal thing. Lawyers, any lawyers, please write in and comment on this one. But yeah, it could. I'm either picturing someone who's just so you. I mean, we've all known those people that get their mind set on something, and it's all they'll talk about for months and months and months and months until it happens, and then it's just done. Mm -hmm. And it's like people get so set on something, not like a not like a career or a goal or a dream. It's more like a, I want to renovate the house. Yeah. And it's like they get so set on that and that's all they can think about and they become so obsessed with it. It sounds like me in our house reno. No, <laughs> our house reno was very necessary. Yeah, Justin but called it a teardown. Most homes I see are just knock it down, bring the wrecking ball, bring Miley, let's go. No, it had such good bones. You guys will see the pics. You'll see the pics. Well, you can't smell through the pictures, so. It didn't smell that bad. No, okay, it reeked. Anyway, at the end of the day, ball's in her court mm -hmm. and just put your foot down and see what happens. And mm -hmm. if this ends your relationship, then... I don't think you'd rather have been like, oh, shoot, I should have done that renovation and just bowed down to him and and gave him half the house uh, to save this. I it, it makes me feel like I wouldn't want that person anymore if I told them, no, I don't want to put you on there and, and renovate this house because I it's mine and I don't want to. Yeah. And I don't, that there's part, part of being a team in a really good relationship is part of also being yourself and standing up for yourself. Mm -hmm. It's not always 100% having your partner's back in the sense that you bow down to them. There's got to no, be balance of power. Balance of power. So sometimes there is an I in team, especially the best teams, because you always have to think about yourself. Yes, there's compromise, but not to this level. Yeah. Well, the top comment on this is all caps, not the asshole, do not do this. There is no need for him to own a part of your home, which is interesting because it definitely bothers him. And one thing I did want to point out is OP saying, I'm scared that if we ever divorce, he gets half. This is like a legacy for my daughter. I do have a daughter prior to him, yeah. which is so important to like ensure your children are taken care of. If something happens to you, like stepdad, is he going to take care of your kid? Yeah. Maybe, maybe not. But like, that is an important legacy. But he says I've been the asshole for not wanting him to also own the house. This is what you agreed to, dude. You signed the paper. Why would you automatically own it? You've invested nothing into it. Nothing. You had a condo that you sold and you still didn't take any of that money and invest into it. You don't automatically just get a house. He's sounding a little bit like a gold digger. Yeah. So say no and see what happens. I'm ready for the update. So the comment goes on to say, if you needed renovations, you could get a loan in your name only using the house as collateral. Right. So this idea that the only way is to take out a mortgage in his name, thereby being forced to put his name on the deed, is a bit suspect. Oh, I'm so glad this person's getting the bad vibes I am. Well, I mean, it's true. I mean, wh whoever is on the deed can leverage the house. Yeah, if like they had a room falling apart and water is spraying everywhere yeah. every day, and well, and if this home's value has increased from four forty to almost a million, it might make sense to take out a small home loan and do some renovations if it actually needed it. If she wants to, well, you would add more equity, right? The home's value may even increase more depending on the project. But 
it doesn't sound necessary. This sounds like a ploy. She's happy in it. This is a ploy for him to get on the deed, which is like, ah. The same comment does continue. You don't give any details about how paying off his debts led to him having nothing left from the sale of his condo, but that jumped out to me. It could be totally normal if he didn't live there long and paid off student loans. But if he has a history of accumulating debt, I would be extra careful of giving him legal rights to your house or taking on any kind of joint debt. Mm -hmm. Make sure you are checking your credit score regularly. I hate to be suspicious, but your house is a significant asset and you have a child to think of. OP does respond. You're right. He had some student debt, some accumulated credit card debt from before he met me. And he also paid for his car so he wouldn't have any payments. However, he has never paid anything in the house. The house is not old. 1995 construction, 24,000 square foot land plot. It's a beautiful house. I mean, it's not up to date in today's designs, but it's a beautiful house. Just everything all of a sudden seems like a red flag to me. And although I love my husband with all my heart, something just seems off. See how he reacts. Ooh, Next comment down is from the top comment again. Listen to your gut. Check your credit score and your child's. Consider putting important legal documents, deed to the house, copy of the prenup, copy of your will, your birth certificate, your child's birth certificate, etc., in a safety deposit box at your bank. Not sure what your reproductive situation is, but make sure you are doing what you need to do to avoid an unplanned pregnancy. Did I say check the child's credit score? Yeah. This is like a big thing that sometimes parents will accumulate vast amounts of debts in their child's name. How? They take out a credit card in their child's name. Parents have access to your social security. What age can you get a credit card? I don't, this is, I've seen this a lot. I've seen this a lot. getting our kid a credit card right when they're born. Think of the age of their credit history. You know how credit history is like a big a big portion of what makes up your credit score? Yeah. Think if they had a card that by the time they're 18, already at 18 years. Yeah. At 18, they'd have big, big credit. We'll get them like five cards by the time they're 18. Yeah, some... Um, so you can't get a credit card in your own name until you're 18, but you can allow certain minors to become authorized card users depending on the issuer. Ah. So 13 to 16 years old is what I'm seeing. So ain't no kid got a credit score. Well, she never said how old her daughter was. Could be a 16 year old. Could have a credit card in her name. I thought it was a young kid. Or 18. Who knows? I don't know. I don't know. I thought it was a young kid. It could be a baby. No, I don't know. There's no mention of age on this one. Well, um, yeah, then I guess then I guess check the score. Check those <laughs> I scores. I was picturing like a baby. maybe it was the last story bleeding in a little bit. Two and a half year old, yeah. Mixing wires. And I'm tired. This is a late one for us. Currently 906 at time of recording. There are a lot of comments from OP. A lot, How about a an lot, update? a lot. Update, update. I'm not seeing any formal updates. I told him. He got mad. He left. Yeah, no formal update. Not on the post. Um, not in any comments. But someone goes, not the asshole. You're right to be cautious. Your statement that he automatically gets half is not correct and depends on where you are. In the U.S., it's possible to own a smaller part of a property. Let's say your home is worth 850 k and if he's willing to put 150 k into renovations, an attorney could assist with ensuring he only owned 15% of the property. The reason why I would caution against adding him at all is the complexity of untangling that ownership if you split up. That's why you should never co-own anything in life. You could have a post-nup. Yes, it's a thing that says you have the right to buy out his 15% or whatever if you choose and how that value would be determined. Ultimately, there are ways, but legal paperwork is never fun and you shouldn't feel forced into it. Correct. There's ways to do it as a team if you want to. Yeah. There's always ways to protect yourself. Absolutely. And so the whole point here is she doesn't want to do it. So OP responds to that comment. 
I was not concerned until this past weekend when my husband had a talk to my brother and his significant other. My husband was openly telling them that even with the prenup, he will fight me for 50% of the gaining capital of the house. I think we have a solid marriage. At least I feel that. Mm -hmm. But I think I'm seeing too many red flags. Don't get me wrong. If ever we would divorce, that would be the worst thing for me because I absolutely love my husband. I will follow your advice, call the lawyer, and better have a meeting to legally understand the possible outcomes. No, 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 no. Have this a dude meeting, is a snake. Have a meeting to figure out how to protect yourself now. Meet with a divorce lawyer? This is a snake. This is a wolf in sheep's clothing. This is someone who sees dollar signs in this, their eyes. This dude, which there are people out there that do this shit. There are people out there that do way worse for way less money. This guy could have looked at this five-year investment of my time I'm going to walk with 500K. Yeah, maybe. No, people but, think yes, like this sometimes. But I think the more likely thing is it happened over time because the house increased a lot in value over that time. He couldn't have predicted that. I mean, all real estate goes up, but. Dude, there's something really going on here. So someone comments So, as an aside, what debt has he accumulated now? Currently, he has no debts at all. He recently bought a very expensive car, but other than his car, he has nothing to pay. Commenter goes, well, it's very strange. I saw one of your other comments about him getting the house appraised for fun. You don't do that for fun. You do that when you want to try and sell or for insurance purposes. Since it's your house, I'm guessing you pay the insurances. So I find it all very suspicious. He said the appraisal was for free from his bank, so we can know how much equity we have in assets. I thought this was normal every few years. I don't, from my no, understanding- No, those, those cost money, dude. From my understanding, unless you have a realtor that's a friend or like, but realtors can't technically appraise. I think it has to be an appraiser, but like, that's not, What? This feels weird. Do you just get curious? Like, oh, I wonder what we're worth. No, just go on Zillow and see what the estimate is, dude. So <laughs> weird. Someone is asking, like, does he handle most of the cooking? And they split all household chores very evenly. Mm. That's actually kind of surprising. Oh, he's sweat equitying it. Yeah, this one, this one's interesting. This commenter goes... Not the asshole. Probably more dramatic than your situation, but my grandpa remortgaged his house to help his girlfriend's kid. She tried to kill him, and when that didn't work, she ended up losing the repayment contract, and he never financially recovered. We moved him to be close with family so she couldn't hurt him again, but he died poor after a lifetime of work and paying off his mortgage. There's some sick people out there, Justin. Sickos. You can never, ever, ever truly trust anybody. <gasps> oh my God. This next commenter, not the asshole. I had a house that my now ex wasn't on. We decided to do major renovations, creating a new mortgage where he was added. He left two weeks after we moved back in. While we were able to settle the house amicably, it left me with a huge mortgage. He made three times what I did. I will never allow another soul on my deed. The house will go to my daughter and she can do what she likes with it. I will never jeopardize it. OP goes, this is exactly what I'm afraid of. And the more I read the comments of people, the more I'm, e I'm becoming aware of this. I'm very naive in general. I don't have the heart to think my husband will hurt me, but I think I'm wrong. Maybe my life and marriage is not all nice and pretty like I thought. We don't argue. We get along super great. We are an awesome team. At least that's what I thought. Ain't no team. Mm -mm. Um, someone asks about bank accounts, and this is the last comment OP responds to anyways. Um, but they ask about bank accounts, like do you have joint accounts, separate accounts? If they are separate, are you allowed to see any of his bank statements or financial records? We have separate accounts. He wants to keep it like that. I've told him many times we should just have a joint account. He doesn't want to. Yeah. I don't know. That's, that's, you he, know, that's what, whatever each couple wants to do out there. But I, I think it's, it, there's advantages to having at least one joint account 
because a lot of expenses are joint. Yeah. And it's just easier. I think like, you oh, should we're never. Going to the grocery store or like the game we've been playing for years. June's oh, Journey. Is, oh. Like, oh, am I getting this meal? Oh. <laughs> or are you getting this meal? Or who got the last one? Is it my turn, your turn? And it's like, if you just had a mutual one account, there's no turns. It's like, let's go to dinner together and then yeah. we pay for the bill. And it's just nice and easy, right? Or you yes. can, like, it's nice once in a while to be like, I got this one. I but, don't ever, ever, ever think that when you get married, I don't ever think you should completely combine finances, especially if you both are working. If one person is a stay at home parent, I think that's a little different because you only have one income. And the person that's working is kind of supporting the whole family. So that's a little different. But if you're both working, I feel like it's really healthy to have separate accounts and a joint account like you described. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, so smart. Mm -hmm. But this one is weird and I'm getting bad vibes. Not in the Bridgerton times. I don't like it. I control the finances of this house. You live in this house. Yeah. Okay. I just watched Queen Charlotte again tonight. It's so good. But finances were always combined back then. Women weren't even allowed to own back credit in the cards. medieval times, we all combined accounts. No, did you know that women like the first time they were allowed to get credit cards in the US was like the sixties? Fact checking. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you say, something big. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. It was actually 1974. Wow. That's pretty. It doesn't recent. seem real. It doesn't seem real. That's. I know it is, but yeah. it doesn't seem real. Yeah. That's nuts. I mean, when, wait. When did credit cards come out? Yeah, I don't know. Like, or well, I guess credit's always been kind of a thing. Like, you have credit here. Yeah. You you got credit here. Yeah. But when did actual like credit card companies? Become? 1958, Bank AmeriCard, and it had a $300 limit. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Learn something new every day. Sounds like my first credit card. Yeah, literally your Wells Fargo <laughs> starter card that you get. 18. Yeah, I think the balance was about 500. Yeah. I went a couple days after I turned. Got to wow. get that credit history started. I'm telling you. Okay. Check your credit scores, guys. Credit Karma is free. Not a sponsor yet. Have they been in the past? They might have been. But it's free. I use it. I check it at least once every other week. It's kind of like checking Instagram. I. It's really fun. Yeah. And I've learned I started using my credit card as like a debit card. So I like, if you can afford to do this, I know some people do carry balances. But if you can do this, like use your credit card and then immediately pay it off. Like, don't wait and just pay it off once a month. You can. Like, you, yeah, you can. No, my score went up, like, big from doing I this. Know. It, it's like, just a lot of effort. You just, like, well, I have the Apple card, and it's just, like, tap, tap. That's different. Even your banks all have apps. Pay it, Just try it. Your credit score will go up. It it's, does work. Yeah. I'm just too lazy for that. Okay. Moving along. Okay, we're going to get a, a little bit away from the home drama for a second. That's fine. This is a, a relationship that might need some renovations. It is coming from AITAH. It is titled, Am I the asshole for having sex with my boyfriend's younger brother after he asked me for an open relationship? I, 26 female, have been with my boyfriend, 26 male, for about two years. Never had an issue until last month when he asked me to open our relationship. He said that all men have the innate desire to sleep with as many women as they like. He said that women are attracted to men like him who are in their peak physical shape and that he should take advantage of that. Something about men wanting to spread their seed far and wide. I did not see this coming at all. I was appalled. At the end, he said that I'm wife material and the woman that he wants to come home to. But of course, that just rubs salt on the wound. However, I told him that this is fine and asked if he has anyone particular in mind. He was surprised by my reaction and told me how awesome I am for being so understanding. Mm. Then he showed me his Tinder and upcoming date. Nice. Prepared. He Asshole. 
He knew that this arrangement only benefited him because I'm not into casual flings, so I wouldn't be sleeping around. He even said that he knows that I wouldn't go looking for other guys because I'm too sweet and loyal. Oh. So he has a 19-year-old brother, and I called him the following day. I explained the open relationship situation to him and asked if he's interested in some fun. Long story short, he was willing but felt insecure because he is slash was a virgin. I told him that's okay. We had sex later that night. Afterwards, I asked my boyfriend about his date, and he said he had a great time. I told him that I met a younger, cute rugby player who is shy and inexperienced. He was curious and asked for a picture, which I showed him. Utter chaos. He had a complete meltdown and called me all sorts of slurs under the sun. I told him it's natural for me to want someone like his younger brother. You know, peak physical form and all that. He was still blowing up my phone even after I left his house and sent me dozens of texts. I told him the relationship is over, but he kept saying that he forgives me, even though I'm deeply fucked up and deranged. He suggested therapy, but claimed it might not help someone as evil as me. Am I the asshole? This is probably one of the most tricky ones I've ever had. This was posted in the wrong subreddit. This should have been on r slash petty revenge. You're... Well... Do you think asshole? Like, what are your thoughts? I do. Yeah. On both sides. This is like an oh everyone my... sucks kind of thing, right? But yes. Yeah. Very too deranged people. You did not people. have to take it there. That's kind of psycho. <laughs> Like, come on. You wanted out of this from the moment he brought this up, uh, clearly. Right. You're like, yeah. you were done. So if you're done and you're trying to just, like, prove a crazy point, yeah, but you're not taking the high road. So, yeah, you are the asshole. On his end, yeah. what do you really expect? If, the, you know, Jerry says this all the time on, on the other show, but he started having those feelings probably around a similar age. And he said, I knew I had to break up with the person I was with. And I had to go get this out of my system. I had to go explore this because there's no way to have your cake and eat it too. This is the best of both worlds. Like, you know, dudes with like five wives, like in medieval times. We're, yeah. we're going back to the medieval times a lot tonight with yeah. these. Yeah, you, but, you're taking it there quite a bit. Yeah, I think everyone sucks, but... No, that's an asshole move. You can't come, you just can't do that. I think, well, I think in her head, she already knew this relationship was over. So it's For like, sure. Because otherwise of, you would never. No, and it was kind of like a, I'm going to have the last laugh, as deranged as it was in this sense, like going after his younger brother. Like She had to have some interest too at some point because it's like, you don't, you don't just do that. There's some no people, way. Some people don't look at sex as such a intimate thing. Like some people can look at it very physically. And this could have been just the petty revenge, like get back at him that she wanted. But I will say like this was, I think he is more of a scumbag than her. I think at least he, he well, yes, because he was already on the apps and already set shit up. He already had a date. So if she would have said, no, I'm not comfortable with opening the relationship, would he have canceled his date and deleted Tinder? He started cheating on her before that conversation. You don't you don't download Tinder and create a profile and start flirting with right. people and schedule a this date. This relationship is already done. He for was both cheating them. on her already. Well, An open relationship is communicated up front prior to any of course, engagement. This was just a like a uh, end all like yeah. a, like a last ditch effort of oh maybe I can try this yeah he Did essentially he do, was like anything before besides set up the thing and have conversations we don't know well is that just the date that he had that moment what's he been doing the past couple months who knows there was an attempt an attempt at communication like I picture the word communication, he kind of bit off a little chunk of the seat. I feel like he just, just a asked, tiny little chunk, like a mouse betting a piece of not cheese. Not even. He basically just asked for her approval of him cheating. Like yes. he was already cheating. Yes, but he didn't hide it for years and years and years. If this but, is the bar for communication, no, it's not. I said he took a little mouse bite out of the seat. 
There's a lot more left. Mm. Are you picturing that? Out of a seed? A C. Communication. The C. I said, <laughs> if you can picture the word, right? Okay, yeah. Over here, there's a C. Yeah, right? the start of it. Mm -hmm. And a little mouse took a tiny little bite out of it. Yeah. <laughs> that was his attempt at communication. Okay, yeah. That's not my bar setting for communication. Okay, because I was going to say, if that's the bar, it's No, the people saw me. It's low. The people saw me explain it. It's low. You were you were distracted. You didn't even you didn't even listen to me. I was listening. I was trying to multitask a little bit, but I heard you. I heard mouse. Mm. I thought you meant like a a seed, like a seed with a D the at the seed. end. The seed. The but C. uh, yeah, no, this is this is easy. Like, yeah, she's an asshole, and they weren't right for each other anyway. So well, yeah, moving along. Well, <laughs> top comment on this one. This is comedy gold. <laughs> Next comment down. Um, I'm dying. Dying. I just want to post that I'm seeing plenty of comments saying that she's a predator for pursuing a 19-year-old virgin. You can call her petty for fucking her ex's brother. I think she's a legend. But I think that it's bizarre how easily people use the term predator. Bro can literally go off and fight in a war, legally kill people in a combat situation, but because of an age difference between two adults, she's a predator. Sorry, but there's a legal line in the sand. They both consented. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Lady took a flamethrower to a knife fight, and I'm here <laughs> for it. Yeah. I mean, I get, I get that, but you really didn't have to. You could have just said, you know, I'm not interested in this open relationship. I'm like... I think we should break up yeah. and move on and go do our own thing. Absolutely. That's being a lot better of a human. Yeah, he wasn't the greatest guy, but you just don't have to do that. No. Ha maintain a certain level of decency in your life. You know, but sometimes just revenge can just feel so good. Hey, back when I was younger, I would have been thinking about playing that card. Post on the appropriate subreddit next time, though. R slash Petty Revenge. Hey, we still found it. We still read it. Still got it. But now we're moving along. Good. Okay. So this is also coming from AITAH. It is posted 26 days ago. So it's still up, not removed. 7K upvotes currently. Okay. It is titled, Am I the Asshole for Refusing to Let My Husband's Affair Baby Live With Us for a While? I married my husband very young. Three years into our marriage, we got a divorce because he had an affair and got his mistress pregnant. We were split for five years, then decided we had changed as people and reconciled for our daughter we had before the divorce and for ourselves with the help of counseling. We've now been together for six years. During the years apart, I had another child with a serious partner who sadly passed away. A few days ago, we got a call from my husband's ex-mistress. She says her job wanted her to fly out of state this weekend for an opportunity, but it is impossible with her son, and asked us if we would be willing to take him in so short notice. Usually, my husband gets a hotel and stays with his son when she flies out but she said this time would be a longer-term stay. I told my husband, absolutely not. That wasn't happening. He said I was being unfair and that he cares for my daughter, who's from my late partner, like his own, and I should do the same. I screamed at him and said, quote, my daughter isn't the product of my affair. Absolutely no way is he staying here. He got angry and said that I was being ridiculous and a bitch because the child is innocent. In my eyes, it hurts me too much to look at that boy. Am I the asshole? I think so. Huge. I think. Huge asshole. The thing is, is the years later when you decide to come back together as quote unquote changed people. Um, yeah, what he did was wrong. And that was that. But when you agreed to go back into a relationship, you agreed to accept all of him and everything that happened in the past and his kid. You can't go on forever being like, nope, that hurts me too much because that's a product of what you did to me. Well, then don't get back together. 
you're expecting him to live this life in trying to balance you and this kid and never have you cross paths. How does that work? It's fucked up. You should have thought about this the moment you were going to be like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I want to get back together. Because clearly you didn't want to get back together. What was the point of them getting back together? To carry on some fantasy. But they've been together so long now. And why? They're living, they're both living such half lives. Yes, so, because like, this even, sounds so unfulfilling. But even him coming back, how has he gone through six years of going and only seeing this kid in a hotel? This is sad. And never merging the lives after you've agreed to bury the hatchet. Well, and does this little boy not know his siblings? Probably not. Like he's got a he sister, can't come a half see, sister. He can't come see our kids. It'll make me feel too bad. And then they, when they learn what happened, they'll be traumatized because they hung out like. Shit happens. People cheat. But kids do not need to become the victims of their parents, mistakes, affairs, whatever. Kids should never be brought into the middle of things like this. I don't care how old you are. It's none of their business. You're both like. They're living their lives. She chose to forgive him. The minute you chose to forgive him, you're saying, I'm okay with what happened. Well. It hurt, but I'm willing to move past it for you because I love you. That is what you're saying. Move past it and put it in the past and lock it there. It can't be pulled up. You can't go back in the past, grab that knife and come up and stab him again. You have agreed to move on. Not that it was okay. You've agreed that you are past it. It is in the past and it is staying there. Yeah, not like, you're gonna no, move. cheating's not okay, but like, then, it's okay. Like, in the grand scheme of things, like, we're okay. It's all okay that it happened in a sense that you're yeah, willing to move past yeah, it. Yeah, it's just, it's got to stay no, there. We, we know cheating's bad. And it, it's with any big thing that happens in a relationship. If you have a big, serious, serious fight over something, and you move forward and you come back together and you're like, yes, we're happy. There's a limited availability to go back and reference that. You, you can't know what keep I mean? bringing it because up. Because as soon as you do that, you're on a path, as Jerry would say, a path to destruction. Yeah. Because if you keep pulling up all this shit that someone's done wrong in the relationship for 20 years, you're not going to do very well. No. You got to agree that when a problem happens, you figure it out. You sort it out. Some take longer than others. And when you do figure it out and you agree to keep being together, then forget about it. No more being like, oh, and like this is reminding me of that one time you did this and no. that other time you did this. Like you're, if you're keeping notes, if you're keeping track and keeping score, you're done. Like, yeah. And in this case, this isn't going to work. No, and I, I honestly feel bad for him. Like I feel really bad for him. Like, yeah, you made the initial mistake, but this is no way to live your life. No. And I just think I look at every aspect of this, like his relationship with his son. Okay, if he's getting hotels during the time he has his son, how is he, you know, seeing the other kids? How is he being a partner? Like, you are both living these half-lives. Like, I truly feel like it is like that because... And like the cost of a hotel to get a hotel every time he's got to see his son. Come on, lady. I hope the divorce lawyer offers some two for one or BOGO special for you because this is where you're headed. If you do not get your shit together, get your thoughts in a better place, renovate your mind, maybe even your house to add a bedroom for this little boy. Because if you don't, this is not going to end well for you. And if you're that still affected by it, why are you with him? Is it, and I, I understand the pain that, you know, it is a reminder of his affair, but. You got to separate it. You do. And like this kid is an innocent little kid, but you also wonder like, is this coming from insecurity where she feels threatened from this bo little boy's it's relationship? A, like It's probably a mixture of a lot of things. But stuff to unpack think, in therapy. I wish we could address him because I would say, think how refreshing it would be to 
move on from this and you meet someone, you know, there's a lot of people out there. You'll meet someone that makes you just as happy. Yeah. I. And when you agree. do, imagine what it's like when they accept you for you and accept you for the kid you already have and explain the situation. And it's not an issue. Mm -hmm. It just, it is what it is. Cause this isn't going away. You've been together six years since it's not going away. It's a no. long life to live with that. It's messed up. A lot of comments on this one. The top comment is, I wouldn't want to deal with this kid either, but I also wouldn't have remarried him after the affair. So you're the asshole. Next comment down, you're the asshole, not the kid's fault, and you might still need some more counseling. Next comment down, love how these stories talk like they have everything worked out, and then it's like, all caps, overwhelming, glaring, unresolved issues. <laughs> yeah. Next comment. We worked everything out, except the stuff that caused the breakup to begin with. And is going to cause the next one. Yeah. Um, someone goes, after getting remarried, that's not an affair baby. That's now her stepchild. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Next comment after that. It's absolutely brutal that this woman would treat a child who is absolutely blameless this way. She should never, ever have remarried her husband if she wasn't prepared to embrace this kid. Yeah. I think it is interesting she did point out, like, when the husband was like, I love your daughter, like, she's my own. And then she's like, well, she's not a product of an affair. Which, yes, true. But... At the end of the day, What's like, the, where's that getting you? What is this? What is this? Like, do you truly plan on never, ever, ever seeing this kid ever? I don't really That's understand. That's not re like reality. That's come on. Yeah. Maybe you could make it your reality, but fuck, your life is going to be brutal. And I sure bet your other kids are going to want to get to know their brother at some point. Kids are curious. And if they don't meet him, when they're under your roof, under 18, they will seek him out after. They're going to have a relationship, I bet. Just long. Just going to be so long. I think sometimes you got to think, though, too, and a lot of people, you know, it's helpful to have a reality check. And you got to think one thing that stands out from that is you can get stuck in taking shots at each other mm -hmm. even when it's your most, like, I mean, it's literally your partner and taking shots at each other literally just when you step back and think about it. Yeah. It gets you absolutely nowhere. You know, yes, there's bickering because bickering's awesome. <laughs> like bickering's great. It just makes me feel like I'm part of the the old couple that's sitting down on the bench out just enjoying the nice like Sunday when they're 85 oh in the gosh. middle of town somewhere and there's like, like, you Who know they're happy and they've lasted there forever. Like they've been together forever. I think, but you just dad. have a little bicker. Like it's so I love bickering. Yeah, it's because kind it's of just fun sometimes. Yeah, if it's, it's lighthearted, not serious stuff. Yes, I'm saying when you start to take shots at each other, that's when it's like you gotta just be like, we can't do that. No, because that doesn't go anywhere. Your dad said that to us when we were at the state fair with him. We were like bickering about something. My mom said it too. Your mom did? Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't remember what her comment was. One of these trips, yeah. I remember your dad being like, you two sound like an old married couple. Yeah. I think we were arguing about what to order at breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, you get the pancakes, I'll get the French toast and we'll yeah. split the no, eggs. No, that's what, that's, yeah, it's That's fun. literally what it was. Yeah, just, no, that's fine. That's healthy. But when you have big, glaring, unresolved issues like this, this is, I mean, this is... This is the car rolling down the road with three wheels and you know it's only a matter of time before it crashes. Like it's not it's not good. Yeah, you not just good. keep patching it up left and right. Oh, a little lifeboat that keeps having new holes. That's a good one. Yeah, you got to plug S plug slap the band-aids on them. Yeah, exactly. Okay, moving along. Okay, so this next one is 21 days old coming from Am I the Asshole? It is titled, Am I the Asshole for Being Mad That My Stepdaughter Will Inherit Our House? 
My husband, 65, and I, 47, have been married for 10 years. After my husband's retirement party, the discussion of wills and inheritance came up, and my husband informed me that he is leaving our marital home to his daughter, 30, in his will, which left me feeling completely blindsided and shocked. I am aware that due to our significant age difference, I will most likely outlive my husband by many years and will probably have to spend the last decades of my life alone. So I was really upset but also angry to learn that I will most likely be kicked out of our house after my husband's death and left homeless. My husband explained to me that I knew the house belonged to his late wife who inherited it from her parents and that I couldn't possibly expect him not to leave his house to their daughter. I replied that the house now belongs to him and as his wife, I have a right to my marital home and it's not fair that I will be kicked out of our home after I spend so much time and effort redecorating it and making it my own and becoming homeless after his death because I am a housewife and have nowhere else to go. He has an obligation to ensure my financial safety after his death. He said that it will be incredibly unfair to his daughter and his late wife if I inherit the house, and his wife would never have wanted that. His wife died unexpectedly at a relatively young age before she got around to making a will, so my husband automatically got the house as per inheritance laws. He also explained that I am the sole beneficiary of his life insurance and any savings left will be equally divided between me and his daughter. However, I don't think this money would be enough for me to survive the rest of my life, especially as my husband plans on having expensive cruises and holidays for the rest of his retirement. This is where, unfortunately, our argument escalated and we started yelling at each other. I told him he is screwing me over after everything I've done for him, after I gave up my job and my career for him to look after our home, and that I deserve to be compensated. He retorted that he never asked me to become a housewife, and it was completely my own choice, that I knew the risks and benefits and made an informed choice and he will be leaving a reasonable inheritance, and if I am not happy with it, I should go back to work. I told him I never knew that I wouldn't get the house and that it's late for me to return after being out for over 10 years, that he is an asshole for leaving me stranded like this, and that this is not what I agreed to, and he is being a sexist prick by not recognizing my contribution to our family. He laughed at me, saying I never made any kind of financial contribution as we hired cleaners and housekeepers to do most of the chores, and if anything, I was a drain by all the money I spend. Honestly, at this point, I was so enraged and in tears, I screamed at him that he is being completely cruel and locked myself in the guest bedroom. So, am I the asshole for wanting the house if my husband dies before me? You got a smile on your face. What are you thinking? I'm processing. Do we have another gold digger over here? No, I think we just have a case of miscommunication. Mm. I also think uh, people should figure out their wills and these types of things long before this age. As soon as you have any assets, you should have a will because life is fragile and you could get hit by a car tomorrow and then do you want your family all fighting over your stuff? Or do you want it to go who you want it to go to? Which can change over time too. It's not like a will is locked in. But in this case, I feel like the most fair scenario, naturally, is his daughter's 30. You know, how old is he? 67? Yeah. So he's not necessarily dying it's not like he's on his deathbed so we got years his daughter's gonna become established have her place have whatever she has she doesn't necessarily need this house right when he dies and i think the most fair thing is that his wife would get to live out her years there i don't know if she has children i don't know what their dynamic is Mm -hmm. Because his daughter, it's her stepdaughter, right? It's her stepdaughter, yeah. So I think it's fair that it would eventually pass to 
his daughter, but I feel like she should be able to live there after he's gone. Yeah. Well, it is interesting because it's not, it doesn't sound like he made any contribution to this house. He just, you know, there was this terrible misfortune of his wife passing. Mm -hmm. And because she didn't have a will that directly outlined it to her daughter, he inherited it based on laws. Yeah. Which he is like, and again, I know the bar is low, but we read a lot of stories where dads and stepmoms and all this crazy shit happens. I love that he is upholding, you know, this family legacy and his late wife's wish. He's Which not, can still happen. Yeah, well, and here's the thing, right? Like, I get he wants to retire. Maybe the thing is, though, like, maybe his daughter wants to sell that house. So maybe it would be a thing like, hey, honey, do you want to sell this house and have your inheritance now so I can get something different and me and Gloria can live out the rest of our days there? You know, Gloria wants to feel secure. Remove it from the situation. Remove it completely. Like yep. give the daughter her house now if it's possible. Like yep. I get he's not anticipating buying a new home. He just retired. That might be out of the question. True. But it doesn't have to be so... Uh, because I, I do understand where she's coming from, where there is now that looming cloud of insecurity. What's going to happen to me? I'm just, I'm just holding space in this place. That's not even mine. Right. And when my husband dies, not only do I have to deal with my husband dying, but then I have to worry I'm homeless and I have to find a new place and blah, 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 blah. Like it oh, is, yes. it is really, it does feel bad. Like I feel bad for her like that is a really uncomfortable situation yeah i don't think she should end up with it in full ownership no i think there could be something though where at least she's given a grace period like yeah she gets six months she gets a year at least however if the daughter is in a dire situation and needs to move in she has the chance to move in as well like it is her house she can move in but like yeah you guys would be roommates yeah yeah, and like the, there's a way to make sure she feels more comfortable. Yeah, it, it it gets into legal territory that I'm not as familiar with, but I get so curious. Yeah, of like what's truly right. I know you dictate in your will, but I don't know. I, I'd be curious to ask an attorney what are the different ways people can figure these things when they're in this situation because you know this situation isn't unique. Mm -hmm. This happens every single day. And a million different people are in this exact scenario. I'm curious all the different ways that they deal with it. I don't know necessarily if she is owed a certain level of financial comfort for the rest of her life. I don't know what territory, because you're going to have a certain, uh, it whatever is passed down in the will, you're going to have the life insurance deal but i don't know technically what's supposed to happen in that case when there is an age gap like that what is right what is right that she's supposed to that she is supposed to be able to maintain the same lifestyle for the remainder of her life or is that does that just apply to divorce because in a divorce when you have great separation of income and you do have a stay-at-home mom or a stay-at-home wife, there is a point where if you get divorced that that lifestyle is supposed to be maintained going forward. Yeah. And that's what you pay the alimony for. So It is interesting though, and I wonder what alimony would be given- But this isn't- Yeah. Right, this isn't a divorce. I'm just- No, but like death- If it- Yeah. Oh. No, well, I just, I think it's- I'm very fascinated by financial situ like this financial situation in general. Like she is 47 now, was 37 when they got married and like they got married and she instantly quit working. They don't have kids. She talks about, you know, maintaining the home. I'm a stay at home wife. Okay. Well, what are you doing? They, he said, you have cleaners. Like you have people that come clean and do all this stuff. So what are you Who doing? Who knows what, the, yeah, but what we are know you the contributing? To, yeah. It's, I, I, we don't know, but it, it, when you have like 
when you go through a divorce or alimony or things like that, those usually happen because one person stayed home, gave up a career to better their partner's career, take care of kids, yeah, do all right. of these things. But it sounds like he was very well established. He was already 55 when they got married. He was very well established in his career, likely. So what did you contribute? Why do you feel so owed? That's where I was kind of like, it's giving a little bit of a gold digger, but like, I don't know, maybe she hated her job. Maybe this was a mental vacation and she was, she was cool with it. Well, and but I did have that thought too. Like you could, you can go back to work at any point. She could right now. Yeah. Which is what the top comment says. Top comment says, you're the asshole, all caps. It is not your house. He explained it to you. It was his first wife's house and his reasoning for giving it to his daughter is sound. It was her grandparents' house, for goodness sake. It should stay in the family. Mm -hmm. Would you leave it to her when you died or would she lose out on the property her mom inherited? And 47 is not too old to go back to work. Heck, I know people who change careers at that age. Yep. So stop with your excuses. OP responds to that one. Of course I would leave it to her. I didn't have any children of my own, but I don't think she trusts me to. She's never liked me much. She lost her shit when she found out her dad is marrying again. So I think she resents me for taking her mom's place. Okay, so there's already some bad blood contentions there. here. So I wish this was in the writing. Yeah. Like some of that content, but I guess you just don't think of it when you're writing all of it. Yeah, it is interesting. Um, there was a comment that was removed by the moderator, but I can see OP's response. Um, people are kind of questioning legality, I think. And OP goes, I think legally as his dependent, I can oppose his will in the court in the UK, but I don't want to fight a lengthy battle with his daughter. Well, so this is the moment where you sit down and start to think through all this. And if it, I don't know. Do you see this if they're getting in these screaming matches? Do you see this as a potential breaker? This? I could see this be a deal breaker for her. I feel like for him at his point in life, he's 65, 67 or whatever he was. Yeah. Um, 65. He's retired. He just wants to have fun. He's worked hard his whole life. Like, well, 65, yeah. you don't know what you have left. I mean, life is unpredictable. He could have 10 years left. He could have 20, could have 30. We don't know. But it's probably, you know, at his point in life, he's like, I don't need, he might be, I don't need the drama. Like, if you're not happy with this, I love you, but I, the, I'm i not changing it. True. So who knows? There is um, one comment though that goes, info, I don't get it. You left your job to do what exactly? You mentioned your contribution to the family. But what was that? You had housekeepers and cleaners. And it sounds like you didn't raise his adult daughter. So without some concrete contributions, it's unclear what you've been doing for 10 years. That's true. Okay, so the housekeeper did the basic cleaning and cooked the morning meals. Before he came home from the office, I always made sure the house was spotless and homely and cooked his favorite meals. I always gave him messages and did whatever I could to look after him and care for him. I spend so much time and I wonder if they meant massages there. I don't know. I spent so much time and effort into always looking the best for him. I planned and hosted a lot of events for his work. I did my best to become whatever he needed. That sounds like it's out of the 1800s. I made sure the house was spotless and I looked the best for him. Info, is the stepdaughter aware of all of this? What's her take? Does she even want the house? Uh, OP responds, she has her own house that my husband helped her with the down payment, and she lives in another city. She's always resented me living in the house her mother owned and lived in, so I can't imagine her being okay with me inheriting it instead of her. She's not, No, that's not even on the table for you to inherit it. That's not the language to use here. If you want a place to live, talk about a place to live, but stop saying you're it's going never, to inherit it. It's never passing. And get your over hand. the money shit, dude. Like, no, you're getting a piece of the life insurance or whatever. He probably. And then the accounts. He probably has a million dollar policy. Or whatever it is. 
Yeah. Like, this sounds like a bougie that, family here. That message is where true colors start coming in. That, whatever you just read, that's where it's like you're getting greedy and you're starting to not make yourself look too good. There is a comment. You're the asshole. I get why you feel this way, but this reads a little bit like you are a gold digger. You are young enough to go back to work and he won't leave you stranded as you will get his life insurance and half of his savings. I don't know where you live, but that's likely an amount you could find a new place to live. Right. Get your shit together. Yeah. Um, they go on to say, I don't know where you are, but I assume there are ways you can optimize your savings with retirement funds and stuff. I'm not a financial advisor. It sounds like you can think about your spending now, too. Subtle little dig there. Mm. OP goes, I honestly didn't date him for money. I didn't even realize he was wealthy until six months into our relationship. I could never marry someone I didn't love. I guess I was just shocked as I always thought at the very least his daughter and I would inherit the house jointly. I didn't realize the house belonged to his late wife's parents. I thought they bought it during their marriage, but only the wife's name was on the deed as she was the main breadwinner at the time. My husband said that his wife took care of the majority of the bills whilst he was doing a PhD. So I just thought that's why her name was on the deed. If I knew, I wouldn't have become this attached to the house. Okay. I mean, she's not she's not all bad. It just sounds like she was shocked and put in a uncomfortable position. Yeah. Tried to bring it up. And then it just spiraled into this really big issue. Yeah, which emotions really sounds like it took over. And I I guess if I was in that position, like, I would be panicked about becoming homeless. I feel like I did go through something similar to this with, like, my dad and, like, COVID. Neither one of us were working. Our condo that we're in has HOA fees and all of this stuff. Yeah. And we were at a point where the house was literally about to get foreclosed on. Like, if it were not for this podcast, I likely would have moved back to Minnesota, moved in with you. But, like, the question of where me and my dad were moving and living, like, it was a very scary reality. I mean, there was thousands and thousands of dollars owed. You think you would have moved back? I don't know what I would have done. I probably would have moved in with you, but, I mean, I don't I don't know. Like, when you're faced with that desperate thing, like— Moving home at that point could have been easier. We we had only been together like a year or two years at that point. Two years. COVID. Only. 2020. Well, we're we're almost at five now, but I don't feel like much is different between two and five years. No, we've been like pretty you get consistent. closer and you do a lot of cool things, but I don't feel like there's I don't feel that's like saying, oh, I got to stay in it because we've been together for 10 years. No, but I think we were at a point where we were stable enough where we could have made long distance work until I got back on my feet financially and was able to get a job. And it would have been temporary, but it was definitely a reality. I, I remember us talking about it and me yeah. crying yeah. that I didn't know what was going to happen. I was so scared. So... I get where she's coming from with her reaction. I would have... She can just take some more... At this point, she can take some more control back into her own hands. Yeah. And get herself her own money and just yeah. start planning for whatever... Nice cushion. ...this ends up being. Absolutely. It'll work out fine, but just no more of the screaming matches. I hate that. Yeah. I hate when people are yelling at each other. It's the most unproductive thing in the world and it just makes everyone look dumb. Like, I'm going to stand here, and Morgan, you go over there, and we're just going to yell because we're so mad at each other. Because what does that solve? Yeah. Zero. It no. actually gives you more problems. Well, we do have an edit from OP. A little bit of an edit update. Okay, I got it. I am the asshole. <laughs> Overall vote was asshole. Yeah. I think a lot of us would agree with that. I will apologize to my husband and try to look for a job. This time, something not so stressful and something I will enjoy and build my own savings. I do not want to divorce my husband and take half. I honestly didn't marry him for money. I didn't even know he was wealthy until six months into our relationship. Honestly, when I met him, I was done with dating and so jaded with men after being cheated on quite a bit. 
until he came along and honestly kind of swept me off my feet. He was so thoughtful, kind, and loyal, and our socio-political opinions just matched. We saw the world in a similar manner, and I never thought I would be with someone much older, but he was everything I've ever wanted. I used to work in customer service jobs, and in my last job, I was a 999 call handler. And yeah, it was really bad for my mental health, and I made minimum wage. My husband encouraged me to do something I enjoy instead, as he saw how it stressed me out. Although I did intend to find a more relaxing job, honestly, yeah, I enjoyed being at home and pursuing hobbies and doing things at my own pace. I admit, it was a really comfortable life, and I let him financially take care of me and become financially dependent on him. It was way easier than the grading and the grinding. I had grown really attached to the house, which I wouldn't have done had I known it wouldn't ever be mine or that I would be kicked out of it at some point. But yeah, I realized it's completely my fault for assuming and that I was acting entitled. I will apologize to my husband and my stepdaughter. Okay. See, when Happy all ending. when all you Reddit people just love to see people crash and burn and and fiery like hell. Sometimes divorce is necessary, Justin. Sometimes <laughs> people are good and they just have a bad emotional reaction because they're reacting out of fear. Mm-hmm. And they're good people and it all can work out in the end and they can work as a team. Yeah. It can work out. It can. Instead of all you are like, oh, give me the, they fought and broke each other's legs and then one fell off a cliff and then the other one won and inherited everything. It's like. <laughs> you know what you're just giving right now? Her legs were gone. Her eyes were gone. That's her what, arms yeah. were gone. And that's exactly where you see all the girls then are like glued to the TV. And the guys are like. You trying to put me out of and business? And then as soon as you put on a scary movie or something, it's like, oh no, no. So what I'm getting here is Justin wants me to be out of a job So you're again. scared of fake stuff. Ooh, ghosts and all this stuff. But you're not scared of the real shit? Someone running around and killing a bunch of people and torturing people? I'm scared of it all. Oh, I believe in everything. It. Like, yeah, but you're like glued to the screen, like, give me more. And then a horror movie, you're like, no, I don't even want to watch it. They're scary. It's fake. It could be based on a real story. Annabelle, based on a real story. Or someone's dream or trip on drugs that they think is a real story. Oh, God. I saw um, The Nun has another movie coming back out. We have to. We have to. You can't say no to that one. I know. It's really bad. I don't want to see it. The first one was terrible. But The Nun is what made me realize Justin was not just a friend. Like he, well, I still had him kind of friend zoned at that point. But I thought. That was not friend zoned. I thought he only wanted to make friends because that's what he told me on Hinge. Why? Because I wasn't responding. And what worked? It did get me to go on our first date. I didn't know it was a date, though. Look what's happening right this moment. Yeah, but we went to the nun, and he like put his hand on my leg, and I literally, my jaw must have dropped in the movie because I was like, oh, shit, he don't want to be friends. No, I looked. You didn't have any reaction. It was internal. Yeah, it was internal, but I was like, what the fuck? But um, the nun was terrible and scary, and if you're driving in Los Angeles right now and you go down uh, Vine... And Hollywood, there's this big parking lot. They always do like installations for movies, Netflix releases, whatever. And it is literally so creepy. They made the- I didn't see that. I drove right by that today. You'll see it tonight when it's all lit up and there's a big like, they made it look like the parking, it's a parking lot. They put up walls, made it look like a church with stained glass windows. Did it just go up today? I saw it last night driving back. And- it's lit up and the nun is standing there in the stained glass window and it's so scary. Nice. I believe in I believe in scary stuff like that though. Well, we're going and the beauty about seeing that in the theater is can you can't like like when you're at home and you're watching a scary movie, you can kind of like look to the side and if you're uninterested and a pop out scene happens, you don't get as scared. In I don't the even movie, watch half the movies. You my- can't get away from it. You just cover your eyes. Because it's loud and it's right in front of you. It's the whole thing in front of you. I hate it. So you just have to take the jump scares. Oh, this is going to be great. I don't like this at all. This is going to be great. Mm -hmm. We can sneak wine in again. Yeah. It's a good hack. 
Yeah. Just bring your big, big except, bag. Except you remember that one movie theater? We bought Cinnabons and they said we couldn't take them in. You just can't let them know you have anything. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Moving along. One last one, I think, which I'm going to give you a choice on, okay? Both of these stories have updates. I'll get it out right now. They're both kind of juicy. I'll read the title for the first one, okay? Mm-hmm. Am I the asshole for wanting to keep an expensive birthday gift that made my boyfriend uncomfortable? Okay. Number two. Would I be the asshole for going to the funeral of my ex-girlfriend's brother and missing my sister-in-law's wedding? First one. First one. Expensive yeah, birthday not, gift? Yeah, I'm not into all that drama. I want to know what the gift is. I hope all my people think that too. Because I'm deciding for the masses. I'll, I'll still give you story number two. It will be on Patreon this month. Okay, so for this one that Justin picked... This is unusual. I usually, Lauren, I'll give Lauren an option to pick. And then I'll be like, mm, actually, no, I'm going to do this one. So I'm surprised I wanted to keep with it. It is a good one. Okay. So again, the title, am I the asshole for wanting to keep an expensive birthday gift that makes my boyfriend uncomfortable? Hmm. I, female, just turned 25 and have a friend, Logan, male, 25, and we've been friends since we were seven slash eight. I have a boyfriend, Matt, who I've been dating for eight months. My birthday was last week, and I had a dinner party for some friends before we all went out to a club. There was eight of us, including Logan and Matt. We had a little bit of a gift opening before dessert, and Logan gifted me an old copy of The Great Gatsby. The book has a special significance to us because for many years, Logan and I lived in different countries. We kept in contact, but we didn't see each other in person for about four years. We finally got our parents to agree for me to fly to his country to visit in 2013. We were talking about what we were going to do on the visit, and I really wanted to go and see the Great Gatsby movie, which had just come out, as it is my favorite book. Logan had never even heard of it and I said he had to read it before we went to see the movie. Logan was never academic, and to this day, it is the only fiction book he's ever read all the way through, not counting children's books. Whenever I ask him to do me a favor, he always replies with, quote, I read The Great Gatsby for you, so I may as well. It's a running joke. We always go big on birthdays, but this book means so much to me. The day after, Matt said he felt like the book was an inappropriate gift because of how expensive it is. I tried to explain to him that it's just a sentimental gift and that the cost isn't the point. But Matt said he feels weird that another man gifted me something that costs more than his car. This what kind of car is he driving? What kind of book is this? True. <laughs> this argument went on for a long time, and Matt said that he thinks I should return the book, and if it means so much to both of us, then Logan can keep it. I told him to grow up. We've been having this fight on and off for a week. Matt's saying that it's reasonable for him to be uncomfortable, but I think he's being a jealous child. It's not like Logan gifted me a giant diamond necklace just to show off. He gave me something heartfelt that means the world to me. And I think that should be more important than the fact that Matt thinks it's outside what he deems an acceptable budget. My mother is saying to give Matt the benefit of the doubt and maybe ask Logan to keep the book for now. And if one day Matt is more secure, I can take it back. Mom my, said? My dad is saying Matt's an idiot. My girlfriends are split. This argument is just dragging on and I'm leaving for my birthday trip tomorrow and I just need some perspective on whether I'm being unreasonable wanting to keep the book. That's the original post. Oh, okay. I got a lot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta reel it in here. No, let it fly. Don't reel anything. Pop off. Uh, this is a time as old as tail. Okay. Tale, no, let me redo that. Let me redo that. Okay. <laughs> this is a tale as old as time. Mm, okay. 
when you first start dating somebody, it is very tricky to figure out their dynamic with all their uh, relationships, friends, family, everything. You kind of are going in blind to this well-established system. And you don't know, you've been hurt in the past. So you you have your traumas and you have your, you know, you're protecting your little heart inside yeah. that, that little metal box. Yeah. And in doing so, you have to go in, you know, you got to tiptoe into these kinds of things and really, you got to almost like June's journey at like Sherlock, figure out what's going on. And sometimes you meet girls that have a lot of guy friends. And this is uncomfortable for young males because they don't understand that girls can have friends that are guys. And even more tricky that guys can have friends that are girls. Because as a guy who is young and insecure, you don't have any friends that are girls because you can't imagine having a girl that's that close that you also can't do things with and vice versa, whatever. (laughs) So. You wait, you're young and insecure? Me? Yeah. Right now? Yeah. No. Okay, good. I don't think so. Okay, good. Unless that's for someone else to determine. I can't determine that about myself. (laughs) Um, But even when I first met you and we were in the early dating stages, though I did not approach it this way and I probably didn't feel things as strongly, I was very confused about your relationship with a lot of people because (laughs) there were a lot of stories where... You know, you tell, well, okay, here. So you had a lot of guy friends. Yeah. And we would always be around a lot of these guy friends. Yeah. And each time I went in, totally cool, open mind, because I was obsessed with you. And though at some points I was like, you know, I had some of that insecurity creep up where it's like, is this really a friend? Is it really? Or like, is she playing me? Because I'd been played, you know, and I was, yeah, you know, you're, you're a skeptic. Yeah. You don't know someone that well in no. the first few months or even the first eight months. So where you're like, is she just messing with me? And I'm just like a great time right now and whatever. But this is really like a guy she's seeing too. Yeah. You play all these games. I'm sure girls go through the same shit where you're kind of yeah. like, is, like, is this you all? You have to evaluate. You you don't instantly know off the bat and you can only trust so someone as well as you really know yeah. them. So and, yeah, it's a learning curve. But you also curve. can't like be so insecure that you wreck the relationship. Oh, and like self-sabotage, so, it happens. Like, th- like this. Yeah. Um, And so I, I felt those feelings, but there are dynamics where you keep going through and stuff will pop up. That's just natural being a human. Then you truly realize that a girl and guy can be friends and it can be an amazing relationship. Yeah. That's completely a friendship. And you start, then you really respect, like once you get to that point, you would be like, this is a badass, awesome gift. Cause it wouldn't be right for me to get you that. Doesn't make sense for our history, but that is a really thoughtful, amazing, cool gift. And I'm like, this is dope. Like from my perspective, I'm like, this is awesome to be that thoughtful and that full circle to have that. And I want to know how much the book is worth and how much the car is worth. <laughs> um, Cause it's like this, some $40,000 book, but, and Logan's just got it made. I mean, but that this is, is a pretty spendy book, but really this is uh classic young dude uh, insecurity, but, he yeah. just isn't going about it the right way and it's 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 crossing a line. It is. Whereas yes, I've had these feelings, but it was never something where I would ever say something like that or probably feel it that strongly. It's interesting. I I guess like if someone got you like if it was your family, I wouldn't care, but if there was like a girl that you're friends with that got you a $10,000 present, I might be a little like, what the fuck is going on? But it also still could be a friendship. It could be. But you be. walk this fine line. And you have to evaluate. And like, they've only been together for seven months. She's been friends with Logan for, oh my God, she's 25 now. And they've been friends since they were seven or eight. 18. Okay, so they've been friends 18-ish years. 17, 18-ish years. Okay. That's a long time. Well, and you see that in the movies. 
Oh, the girl comes back home with the guy and oh, the long term. I just want them to be together already. I'm a hopeless romantic. Logan. See. Come on, Logan. Okay, guys. Forget (laughs) everything I said. Be insecure. (laughs) Don't let your girl have any friends. Well, no, this is just really cute. I don't know. So it's different. It's not like the thing that tipped me off the most is not the mom. Cause usually the moms are not really in touch with the relationships, but they think they are the girls. However, their girlfriends being split, the girls being split is weird because is there some <laughs> long running love tale here that hasn't come to fruition? Or these girls have just had a lot of insecure boyfriends and they're used to making concessions. Time will tell. Time will tell. Top comment. Your dad is a smart man. Listen to him. Logan gave you a gift that holds sentimental significance to both of you. If it had been a girlfriend who had given it to you, Matt wouldn't care. He cares only because he's jealous. Not the asshole. Keep the book. And to put a little perspective on how Matt needs to stay in his own lane, you've known slash been with Matt for seven months. Logan has been your friend for 204 months. Logan is a long-term friend. Matt has been in your life for a hot minute. Yes. And in in Matt's position, as in my position, what you do is you just keep putting all of yourself into it. Mm-hmm. Love that person, like, fully. Yeah. And time will reveal these things. Yeah. If it really isn't meant to be, you'll find out. If those guys that are friends aren't really friends, you'll find out. Mm -hmm. Time will reveal. But if you're happy and like everything's great and this is the the one weird thing that's come up, just keep your mouth shut. See how it evolves. If it becomes too much of a problem for you, be the big person and leave. You know, Mm -hmm. it's going to work like one way or the other. It's going to, it's going to, it'll work out. Who knows? But like in that position, as a young guy, just just keep going. Like Or don't. anyone. Like I think girls can go through yeah. this too. Like obviously if you get to a point where you're two years down the road and you still feel like someone is coming in between your relationship with someone, then it's probably time to reevaluate. But seven months is still very fresh. You don't really know someone you until You don't know the dynamic at all. A year of really dating them. Even still. Yeah. So I would say like keep going. But it is good that he communicated his feelings like, hey, this makes me uncomfortable. Yes, like, yes. that's healthy at least. But yeah, he is a little insecure. But where do this, you fall on it then with the expensive gift? Um, I think this instance is totally fine. If it was not so sentimental and it was just like a lavish luxury that came out of nowhere, like, I want to buy you a $5,000 purse just for fun. It's kind of like, well, that's a little crazy. But if that was Logan's style and Logan had bougie money and was like, hey, here's a thousand dollar necklace because I love you. Happy birthday. Hey, next year, five thousand dollar purse. That's just kind of Logan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of a pattern. Like, but no you threat. wouldn't know. But you, you don't wouldn't know. know. You don't know. Someone does uh that so that top comment though does add, please secure the book. Matt may destroy it, hide it, or even sell it. And maybe you should break up with Matt. Per your mother, he's insecure. Oh, yeah. Is that sarcastic? Kind of picking up the mom saying, well, maybe Logan should okay. keep it. He's insecure right now. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> so edit. For everyone asking about the book, it's a 1925 edition. Well known to be fairly rare. One that I'm seeing for sale online right now is $9,500. Let's get it. What condition? Uh, this one is in fine condition. Well, let's get it. I don't want a book that expensive. Yeah. God, fragile little things. Yeah, right there. There's a spot for it right there. The prices vary, but it's Googleable if you really want to know. There are a range of prices and it's somewhere in the middle. I'm not going to say the exact amount. Forever in asking why I'm not dating Logan or why I never did, I explain this in detail in several comments, but this is the most comprehensive and reflective one, I think. Okay. There was a YouTube segment of Olivia Coleman and Amelia Clark having tea together. And Olivia said her, quote, what's your favorite item in your wardrobe or something similar? And she said, quote, 
a beautiful Chanel cardigan that I really love, but I've never worn because it just doesn't suit me. And it just reminded me of that. It's not that I don't absolutely adore Logan. I do. I can unreservedly say he's my favorite person in the whole world. But if you ask me why I'm not in a relationship with him, I don't have a concrete answer because there's nothing about him I don't like, but it's just never happened. (laughs) So Matt's justified because he's picking up on this. And I think he would say the same thing. When I think of the way he was with his ex and the ones I've had, including Matt, I don't see us being that way slash those people for each other. So there's no real reason, but she doesn't see him that way. Sometimes that's not comforting. Sometimes that's a threat. (laughs) Sometimes it takes test driving a car to know if you like it or not. See, (laughs) you have nothing to worry about. Matt might though. (laughs) From the girl who said someone else's name very early on. You can't, you can't slander me like that. And look who stayed around. (laughs) When you're the one pushing the narrative of the, oh, yep, no, he's just a friend. (laughs) But I hope they get together. I hope they get together. Well, this This story. This is what is wrong. This is a beautiful romantic story. This could be on book talk right now. But no. I would have been messed up. If some shit went down a year in with us, <laughs> oh boy. Okay, so for the actual update, because that wasn't it. Oh, wow. So I got some requests for an update, and I did say I'd try to post one, so here it is. Coming to you from a Mediterranean island that has been very unkind to me. Huh? Uh, update. I just want to say a huge thank you to all the responses. Internet strangers get a bad rap, but I really appreciate all the advice. So first update, Matt and I broke up. He didn't end up coming on my birthday trip, but we were kind of talking on and off and he sent me a text that dropped the L-bomb and I didn't respond in kind. That was the last straw for him. Now that I think about it, that was the next hurdle that was coming. This just brought it forward, I guess. He'll be picking his things up over the weekend. I would like us to stay friends. I still like him so, so much, but I know that's not really up to me now. If you don't love someone after seven months, there that is a answer. That's kind of, yeah, that's kind of way past L-bomb territory. Maybe. So I, let's put that to the poll. I'm curious. I am curious. I told my mom about the breakup and she apologized for making me feel like I was in the wrong about keeping the book. She said she was just so used to seeing me treat men as disposable, and because I'd been with Matt so long, she thought maybe he might not be, and she got too caught up in that. I think hearing that I wasn't even ready to say I love him was a shock to her, and she realized she'd been telling herself a story about him and me that wasn't what was playing out. On to me and Logan. Obviously, a whole wealth of opinions and advice was shared about our friendship, and honestly, going through the comments on the post— was the first time I'd really ever thought that deeply about our relationship. It brought up a lot of memories and feelings, and I did end up talking to Logan about it and telling him about the original post. I ended up making a note of some people's questions and asking him. I really wish I could include all of his answers here because I think his responses were pretty funny. That said, word limit, so I'll keep the answers short. Logan did not buy the book as a way to express romantic interest, and the plot was not relevant to his choice to purchase it. Logan has never wanted to date me. Feelings are complicated. Obviously, there was more we talked about, but I will just leave you with another metaphor since the cardigan one was such a hit. Sometimes a thin gold chain will sit in your jewelry box for a decade, and over the years it will tangle, and the knot will be so inextricable you can't tell where the chain ends or begins. It would take a long time to pick that apart. Some people get out their magnifying glass and a good lamp and work until the chain is good as new. And some people might decide to just put it back in the box before they break it. We're trying to be the first, but the second 
might end up being okay. We'll see. I think that's everything. Ah! Thank you to everyone who responded. I laughed. I cried. I had an existential crisis. It was a wild ride. They're going to fuck. For sure. But top, com- <laughs> top comment on this one. Matt dodged a nuke. Got to hand it to him. Which, I mean, next comment down. Seriously, even her own mother says she treats men like crap. Which is interesting to include about yourself that you're, you didn't have to include the part about your mom saying that you treat men as disposable. But I do think that just goes to show like, hey, this person is looking for love with other people that they're not going to find elsewhere because there are a lot of unconscious feelings for Logan. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Are you over there just panicking or what? We're five years in at this point. You have nothing to be scared about. No. Oh. I'm thinking about the story. Oh, okay, good. Panicking? I'm just, I'm just making sure. No. Sometimes you got to say it, express it. I agree. But no, that's not what I'm thinking. I, I'm kind of not happy that the the love plot is going to continue. Yeah. Well, there are, I'm reading one more comment before we round this out. There were a lot of comments from OP talking about Logan, their relationship, other gifts, etc. And this person goes, the part on Logan where she says, quote, feelings are complicated, LOL. Look at the original thread where she lists all the other stuff Logan has bought her, jewelry, vacations, etc. Nicely summed up in this comment here. Things just keep getting better. He buys you vacations, collector items, art, watches, shoes. You exchange letters for years. You skip school to travel five hours for him. You moved to a city for him. Hun, are you swimming in Egypt? Because you're in denial. Good one. Denial is a river in Egypt. Your husband is gay. It's an audio. I'll show it to you. And all the, quote, totally not love letters, letters they exchanged with each other for years, the level of codependency between Logan and OP is insane. I remember another person commented on that thread saying something to the effect of, Matt is the third wheel on the bike of this relationship that Logan has paid for. LOL. I bet all the men she has ever dated have taken a look at OP's relationship with Logan, realized they're not going to have to compete with Logan for OP's affection, and just decided, nope, I'm out of here. Yeah. Someone goes, whack jobs telling OP that a non-romantic friend buying her a collector's book that goes for anywhere between 5K, very low end, and 150K in great condition is just friendly. Oof. OP said midpoint, That it was more valuable than Matt's car. So let's say 40K. Matt could have a 2K car. Like, we don't know what Matt's driving. Which I will say, like, knowing, like, Logan keeps buying OP all these gifts. Yeah, that could be an issue for someone. That might seem a little weird after extensive gifts. And we even kind of said that, I think, initially where I'm like, is this Logan's just behavior? Like, is he a rich trust fund kid? Like, what's the deal? Or... Is this more of a gesture? Like I said, right, like, but- if someone gave you something that's a friend that was like 10K, okay, I'd be confused. It would be time to maybe ask questions, communicate, evaluate, keep and going on. S- exactly. See how it goes. Right, because we are reviewing it from Matt's perspective of you don't know for a while. Could yeah. have a super ultra rich friend that just gets these crazy gifts and you just get used to that over time. Yeah. You wouldn't know. So when the first couple come, you'd be like, what? Well, well, and this person comments though and they go, right? I read the original post and this post and I'm still trying to figure out how OP was not the asshole. Which like, I don't, I don't think OP even knew her feelings in regards to Matt. Like they were seven months in, they hadn't said I love you yet. Like, that's still a very fresh relationship in their timeline yeah. of events. So it's not like OP was doing something terrible to Matt. 
this book might have highlighted that they're on different pages, not meant for each other. Yay. They're only seven months in. Yeah. But it's not like it was OP's doing that Logan got her this crazy book. Yeah. And if she met the right Matt, per se, mm -hmm. her feelings wouldn't be complicated anymore. It'd they be, might oh, no, not be. Logan's just 100% a friend. Yeah. And this is, so you don't know. No. And there are times that the right person does make you realize your feelings. Like before we started dating, I had a friends with benefits that I thought I really liked. I had a big crush on blah, blah, blah. But like, but like I literally started dating you and we hadn't made it official yet. You had literally asked me to be your girlfriend. And I, I said, no, I wasn't ready. And I went and I hooked up with him one more time. So bad. And it, it literally made me realize though, how bad that was. How Look at what I, I was, stayed through. How, All the stuff. We weren't dating. We weren't together I officially. I, I had know. made it very clear I was not ready for a relationship. I was very open and transparent. But after I, I did that, I was like, oh my God. I love Justin. I really love Justin. And then I said, yeah, I'll be your girlfriend. And it worked out. It was really good. And yeah. here we are. Yeah. Five years later. Having a great time. Not five. It's almost five. Not, five in December. Not five. <laughs> like four and a half, I suppose. Well, then you might as well be 30. Well, you're almost 30. Not as close as you. <laughs> I don't mind turning 30. I'm actually really excited for my 30th birthday. Knocking on the door 50. Just like that. Hey, we only get one life. Enjoy it the best you can. Unless you believe in reincarnation, which I kind of do, but... But you don't know. Yeah, you don't really know. Well, and you don't know that you've had previous lives, True. even if you've had. So it's not like True. it's an extension. No. It's a restart. Yeah. But uh, that is all I have for this episode. It is September. There's going to be amazing Patreon content this month, including a free story, lots of free bloopers from past episodes. So even if you don't have the money to pay, come over, be included in the discussion. You're getting a preview of what merch looks like, which will be coming very soon. All of that's over there. And if you do have a couple bucks you want to, you know, get rid of, there's amazing bonus content, bonus episodes, stories, all the above. So head on over. Other than that, we are headed to London and Paris over the next couple weeks. We are doing meetups in both places. So be sure you're following Two Hot Takes on Instagram in order to get updates about those. But other than that, I got nothing. Love you all. Thank you so much for being here for another episode. Any any thoughts? Yeah. What are um, your thoughts? Well, I hope everyone had a great summer. I hope those Tags. who are going back to school are excited for that because I never really liked it until maybe the end of high school and mm -hmm. then college. Um, but fall is one of my absolute favorite times of year. And so if you're in a place where the leaves turn and that chill starts to come in the air mm. and you get that true sense of fall, just take it in fully because it is the best. It's really beautiful. Okay. Until next time, guys. Until next time. Bye. Bye.